Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for November 1st, 2020, recorded around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. While taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have rapidly intensifying tropical storm Eta located towards the south and west of Jamaica, bringing uh, showers and uh, squally conditions to portions of the Jamaican island. This will be moving westward with time to impact Central America within the next couple of days, uh, especially Honduras, etc. This will be a rapidly intensifying hurricane all the way up until landfall and could pose a threat to be a major hurricane uh, over the next couple of days. If we take a closer uh, zoomed invisible satellite look here, we notice that uh, today we have a much better defined central dense overcast. Uh, deep convection that is trying to rotate around. We have rotating convective bursts, and with time, these convective bursts will rotate all the way around to close off an eye wall. Uh, the eye wall right now is open uh, based on the reconnaissance aircraft that has been in there. But as this moves uh, towards the west here, it still has a while over land or over water, rather. And that shall allow for an intensifying storm uh, and an eye wall to close off. And again, we can see that process trying to occur today with these rotating convective bursts. And if we switch over to the uh, actual uh, satellite here that updates on the um, mesosector view uh, much quicker, you can see these convective bursts that pulse, you know, this pulsating uh, type convection. This will eventually try to rotate all the way around and close off the eye wall. That center is located somewhere roughly in through here where these convective bursts are trying to rotate around. So eventually with time we'll get a closed eye wall, but if we go back and look at the reconnaissance aircraft that was in there from earlier, we can see that the pressures are still in the low 990s. They're right around a 992 millibars or so, probably more so like 991. And then we can also see that the wind here on the northeast side is rather anemic. The wind on the south side is very anemic. But the wind on the northwestern side, because of the overall movement, you would expect a higher wind field on the west and northwest quadrants. And we can see uh, that the sustained wind has indeed increased to near 65 miles per hour. And uh, again, this will be continuing to head towards the west, uh, kind of this general west or, or southwesterly direction. But this will generally move towards the west and intensify as it does so. And this is going to pose a very significant threat going forward with time. And we can see that from the 4 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Again, winds of 65 miles per hour moving westward at 15, expected to become a hurricane by tonight. And again, you can see that this is going to start to slow down on approach. This will be here uh, near the Central American coastline here by 1 p.m. tomorrow, slowing down and crawling, only expected to make, make landfall here between 1 a.m. Tuesday and slowly going inland from there. Now, this will eventually rapidly weaken, and, uh, weaken uh, over the landmass here of Central America before popping out near Honduras and then kind of taking that northward turn. And we've been talking about this for the past several days, how there is considerable uncertainty uh, in terms of where this is going to be. A slow moving storm is very hard to predict uh, where it's going to go. Faster moving storms, there's less room for error. Uh, but in these slow moving storms, there's a lot of room for error at this point. And uh, this kind of allows for there to be uh, the potential for a storm to exist anywhere from off the coast here of Honduras to all the way inland near uh, El Salvador and potentially even over the eastern Pacific. So there's a wide range of possibilities that could occur, and we're about to dive into each and every one of them. We start here with the GFS forecast from the 12Z operational run. This is the 500 millibar flow in the atmosphere. And uh, over the last couple of days, we've been talking about how we're going to have the storm that is in all likelihood going to spin up much quicker. And the GFS has corrected towards that. We're already seeing a strengthening storm, and we're going to see a strengthening storm on approach in towards the Central American coastline. Now, again, our main steering factors right now, we've got a big uh, Central Atlantic ridge over here, a trough with a trailing cold front over the Midwest uh, United States, and another ridge trying to build out across Texas and Mexico. So a couple of things is going to happen. I'll run this forward. This is going to be 24 hours from now by 7 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. We see it then again 
The storm has continued to move westward and is now strengthening, but you can see this very large central Atlantic ridge trying to strengthen as this trough and trailing cold front come all the way down here. And then again, you can see where this ridge, it does back off, but you can definitely see that ridge building over Texas and Mexico. Okay, we'll move this out to 48 hours from now. Now the storm is starting to take more of this west-southwesterly trajectory. Now the reason why it does that is because we have a big ridge building out across Texas and into the Gulf of Mexico. And a ridge consists of anticyclonic flow or generally clockwise flow around the storm. Uh, so on the bottom edge, because the storm is sitting towards the south here, the flow generally in the mid-levels is out of the southwesterly direction. The flow at the low levels is out of the westerly direction forced by these trade winds. So you get a storm that in the mid-levels, because it's stronger, now has to dive towards the southwest because southwesterly flow uh, aloft exists because of this ridge that builds back over portions of Texas and into Mexico. So this is a very big deal because it represents a large range of possibilities. If the storm is indeed a little bit weaker in through here, it's possible that maybe the storm tries to get uh, trapped a little bit. It doesn't feel the southwesterly flow and it might just kind of head straight over and then maybe pop back out here. A stronger storm might exist in the low levels and also the upper levels and get a little bit towards the southwest. Now, after this time, there remains a very large discrepancy here because you can see clearly in the GFS, this is uh, 90 hours from now, the flow aloft gets driven into Central America and then over the Eastern Pacific. Now, we also have a very big ridge sitting across most of Texas, Mexico, etc. And this extends in the lower levels out across the uh, kind of the Midwest at this time. Now, at the very same time, we have a larger gyre setup, and we can kind of see in the mid-level flow here how we have this kind of gyre setup, this general uh, cyclonic flow in the atmosphere that is kind of turning here. And this flow exists all the way into portions of the Gulf of Honduras at this time. Now, what this would exert here is the potential for a cyclone to form on the northern side of this gyre. And uh, we can kind of see that happen that as we go forth with time, we get a kind of a setup where a gyre ends up developing. And we get a storm to develop or some uh, remnant energy to develop out here across Cuba and Jamaica. And this exists uh, pretty decently in the low levels. If we switch out here to the 850 uh, millibar vorticity here, the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground, we can see that there exists vorticity down here uh, at, uh, you know, roughly 156 hours from now. So this would be November 8th or, you know, November 7th going into November 8th. We have something trying to spin up here near Jamaica and Cuba. Now, this remains a possibility, uh, but it also remains a possibility that there's two other outcomes here, uh, really three outcomes, which the first we just discussed, that there's going to be a new storm that forms uh, on the northern side of the Gulf of Honduras and then rapidly moves northeastward from there and maybe pivots around uh, after the, the next couple of days. Or we end up getting a storm that dives west-southwest into the Gulf uh you know, or really into Central America, Central America rather, and then completely dissipates, or we get a storm that moves initially west southwest into uh, Central America, but then pops back out over water uh, at day five. And gradually, the Hurricane Center forecast has been one towards a storm that is more northerly in the trajectory. And again, the Hurricane Center forecast, you can very clearly see at day five, uh, that forecast center point is over the northwestern part of Honduras and the far eastern part of Guatemala and sitting south of Belize. And this has been ever so slightly a change where instead of going directly into Central America, now this is turning northward and eventually maybe popping back out over water in the Gulf of Honduras. Now, models like the uh, Euro here, this is the ECMWF-12Z uh, 850 millibar loop. 
And we can very clearly see that there exerts that possibility for a storm to move into Central America and just be buried down here over the very mountainous regions. But you notice we still have a larger gyre set up all the way from into the eastern Pacific and into portions of the Gulf of Honduras. And we also have a cold front that's digging in down here. We have a cold front that extends out in the mid-levels uh, that is down here. And that exerts a, an area where we have general cyclonic vorticity and a better background across the north you know, part of the Caribbean. So that by eventually 168 hours now, uh, you know, we start to get a storm that develops down here, uh, a separate storm that probably develops uh, in the Western Caribbean. Now, again, this has been a change from the last several days, but we could, because we can see, uh, we, you know, we go f uh, back a couple of frames ago, this exerts back to the 29th of October uh, again, we had a storm that was mainly a weak one over portions of Central America. Now today, we've kind of progressed to see both the GFS and the Euro uh, suggest a new storm developing out here. Uh, potentially, it, uh, it is remnants or a new circulation developing on the northern side of a larger gyre and moving northeast from there into portions of Jamaica and uh, Cuba. So... This is a different forecast. Now, if we look at the HWARF forecast, the 12Z HWARF, it goes with an entirely different solution than both of those models. And we can see here what actually happens is the storm rapidly intensifies. This is uh, becoming a very strong storm at this time. Again, this is 18 hours now, 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. Again, anticyclonic flow or you know, rather anticyclonic flow across the Texas and Gulf of Mexico. This is a ridge that builds in a uh, trough also digging in right now across the southeast. Now, if we move out here, this is going to be, uh, we'll go out to hour 39. This is uh, by 39 hours from now, you can see an anticyclonic flow emerging uh, into the picture on the top left. And this is that uh, ridge that is starting to build back in, but you can see the storm is becoming a lot more stronger and it is taking that dive west southwesternly, but it's not doing it as much. We can see that the storm actually stalls here and by hour 48 because what ends up happening here, we can kind of see that uh, the storm is just positioned a little bit more. The ridge in the southwestern Atlantic ridge is a little bit weaker here, allowing a storm to not necessarily be pivoted into Central America. Rather, because this is a strong storm, a stronger storm exerts more of a northerly tug here. And on the uh, h wharf run here, you can eventually see this does dig into Central America, but just barely. This hugs the coast here. And again, this ridge is starting to build back over, but this just barely hugs the coast. And we can see eventually... Uh, this pops back out over water, and then eventually by the five-day forecast is now starting to get tugged by a trough that is digging in down here. So the storm kind of does something like this and then starts to go more northward. Now, does this remain a possibility? Always. Uh, this does remain a possibility. The uh, GFS ensembles are certainly hinting at that. Um now, the Hurricane Center does note that this is r rather kind of an outlier at the moment, but there's a large amount of discrepancy. And again, a you know, at the five-day realm, you can very clearly see that there exerts a possibility from a storm being here near Belize to something being all the way over here near El Salvador and the Eastern Pacific Basin. So there remains a large amount of discrepancy today. And again, after that five-day realm, a lot becomes, you know, murky in the forecast. Now, if we jump back to the ensembles on the GFS here, and if we look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressure, and we'll go back here. This is uh, our 84. We can see... Excuse me, we can see here on the GF, the GEFS ensembles that we start to get uh, a rather large clustering here over portions of Central America. Now, again, we can also see that there remains a large amount of discrepancy from storm from a storm moving into Central America to a storm remaining off the coast here and then turning northward. And this remains a very real possibility. Now, the one thing that the storm does have in its favor is going to be relatively low wind shear. And we can see here on 
the model here, the H Wharf, relatively light vertical wind shear stacked under a deep layer uh, upper level anti cyclone. And this is very important because this is going to help to potentially uh, intensify a storm very rapidly. And most of the models today are, are dealing with rapid intensification. In fact, here you can see the H wave forecast getting uh, down into a very high end category four hurricane here uh, as it is just kind of sitting off the coast of Central America. Again, deep layer uh, upper level flow here allowing a rapidly intensifying hurricane. Now, we move back to the tracks real quick. Again, this is the 18Z guidance uh, that was kind of forecast here. And again, we can very clearly see that we have a storm that moves generally westward and then bends towards the west-southwest. Now, the H-Wharf, again, is the outlier in this forecast, bringing a storm generally northwesterly, barely scraping landfall, and then generally moving towards the north from there. Uh, now, some of the other models, though, today, like the GFS and the HMOD, along with the multi-model consensus, uh, more than notably the TBCN multi-model consensus, brings a storm uh, kind of down here across Central America through day five, you know, day four to day five, but then pulls this uh, back out over water by day five. Now, again, the longer the spins over the mountainous train here is the less time or the more time rather that the circulation is going to be disrupted significantly. So even if it does pop out here by day five, uh, like the TBN, TBCN multimodal consensus, there is unlikely to be a very significant realm for uh, rapid intensification once this uh, exits out here because the circulation would be largely disrupted here by the mountainous train. Uh, now you can see, though, on the official forecast, this is the um, official forecast from 11 o'clock here. We'll just plot this uh, right here in red. Uh, that is the official uh, forecast as of uh, 11 o'clock, and then the official forecast valid as of 5 o'clock. You can definitely see that there's been a northward trend in the model uh, or in the general forecast from the Hurricane Center today. And again, this forecast generally consists of one that is trying to tug a storm more towards the north. And again, the Hurricane Center forecast as of uh, the 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Time Advisory is certainly one that favors a storm moving generally towards the north. So... Again, there's a lot of discrepancy here, but the one thing that the storm also would have to work with is very high upper ocean heat content values. You can see the upper ocean heat content valid as of yesterday. Uh, literally, these reds and whites, this is the top end of the scale, and I can very clearly see that this exerts uh, a lot of high upper ocean heat content, so very high uh, potential, high ceiling uh, for this to reach in this type of environment. So again, a lot of considerable uncertainties, but again, this should be approaching Central America by as early as tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Nicaragua is certainly going to see a very high impact event uh, as this closes in. And again, after that time, moving into Honduras, uh, but again, this could be anywhere from just off the coast to uh, well inland over uh, Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador, uh, not really having much of a chance for rapid uh, intensification. So we'll see. Uh, but again, all signs point towards a strengthening storm today. Uh, obviously, hurricane warnings in effect for a large uh, part of the Central American coastline. Make sure to take uh, necessary precautions. This will be a dangerous, deadly event. Uh, flooding uh, is also going to be a very big concern. Upwards of 30 inches of rainfall could occur from a slow moving storm. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more either later tonight or early tomorrow morning.